Okay, so Jim Jordan's out, and Byron Donalds, I guess. Um, Donalds, I feel like, has less of a chance because he uh, publicly is better than Jordan. Like, he says things that make him more likable. Um, and that, to the, to the House GOP, is going to make him less desirable than even Jordan. And so if Jordan couldn't get the votes... I don't see how Byron Donalds does either. I guess we just, we'll, they'll settle into having, uh, you know, like the MAGA candidate for speaker, and then they'll have the, um, you know, Bushite, McCarthy-esque trash on the other side, and the Republicans will just vote for the McCarthy trash, and hopefully there will be some holdouts, uh, you know, like... Uh, uh, Matt Gates or Marjorie Taylor Greene or whoever, and of course Byron, Byron Donalds himself, whoever else, uh, hopefully Jim Jordan as well, um, who will stop the uh, squishy, just plain sellout. Well, I mean, not even a sellout, because in order to sell out your beliefs, you have to actually believe something first. These people are purely transactional, um, so it's not fair to call them sellouts. You know, it's like that, um, what was that Keanu Reeves movie where the guy says to him, you're not even a has-been, you're a never-was. That's kind of how it is with the House GOP, or the GOP in general. And so I don't know what's going to happen here. I mean, I would hope that this is dragged on enough to where um, the, uh, the decent people in the House are committed enough to this now that they're not going to let another McCarthy type figure get in there because we've already been down that road and it has ended in disaster. And you know, maybe it's a good idea that you take someone like Jordan who should have been palatable to them, who should have been acceptable because Jim Jordan is perfectly willing to play ball. That's what he's been doing um, for most of his career in Congress. You know, he had a good working relationship with McCarthy. Um, You know, he tried to play nice and they slapped him in the face. They humiliated him. They made him cry uncle and drop out. And so maybe just <clears throat> having him now that he's gone, putting in his place someone who is more steadfast and um, even less, uh, let's say, uh, amenable to the desires of the, uh, the welfare warfare state, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that is a good negotiating position. Because when you try to compromise and the other side says we're never going to compromise, well, then you can't – your response can't be, okay, well, I'm just going to compromise harder. No, you have to go to your corner and wait for them to come to the table. And so even if Donalds doesn't eventually become the speaker, uh, perhaps his candidacy can still play an important role uh, in this process if anything positive is going to come out of this uh, shit show. Because at the end of the day, the average person is not going to care a whole lot about this. I think that they're checked out. And then you have um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's hedging her pets, um, not f- coming out with full forwarded support of Donald. You know, Greene is an interesting character. I think she is a, like – she's someone who – not yet, but in the future, she potentially – might be considered a sellout because she's definitely trying to become a politician um, but maintain her MAGA persona. But instead of just being you know, a, a straight uh, ideologue, which I don't think she really has any ideals, um, she is just trying to do what's politically smart. So she probably knows that Donald has less of a chance of getting in than Jordan, so she's not going to come out and say, you know, uh, and say, okay, we're all behind Donald. She says, yeah, Donald's is nice, but you know who would be really great is Donald Trump. He'd make a great speaker, which this is something that I, I, I've i honestly been on that bandwagon, not because I'm a super big Trump fan, but because I think it is a smart move, um, going all the way back to when the Republicans won the House because McCarthy was always going to be divisive. No one liked him ever. No one ever wanted McCarthy to be speaker. There was resistance against McCarthy being speaker for – uh, going all the way back to, you know, the John Boehner days. You know, people wanted Boehner gone, but the last thing they wanted was for McCarthy to replace him. And so back then, you know, back at the start of this, um, uh, 
there were a few people online. Um, I might have suggested it on this channel. I don't remember, but certainly I know in my head at the time. Um, I thought Trump made sense because one, you know, Trump's out of office. It gives him a platform. He's going to constantly be in the news. Not that he has trouble getting headlines, but you know, it gives him a platform to play a role in politics as Speaker of the House. Um, <clears throat> and he's not going to be as corrupt as McCarthy. I mean, you know, I don't want to exactly say that Trump is clean as a whistle. I mean, far from it. He was in New York real estate. I know how that game is played. But clearly, he's going to have uh, the best. He's going to be um, much more beneficial or much more amenable to the interests of the average citizen than someone like McCarthy. And so he would have just been better objectively in what he produced, but also be smart politically because uh, any Republican in the House who wants to oppose Donald Trump becoming Speaker is – that's political suicide. They're going to out themselves for who they are. But opposing Jordan or opposing Donald's, you know, explicitly because they're too much like Trump and they hate Trump, um, that they can get away with because Trump's name is not actually involved. But once they're on paper voting against Trump, they're done. And it will be very easy to primary them. Now, does that mean that they'll be replaced by someone better? No, not necessarily. Um, I... I think I've cited the example of Nancy Mace before. I believe she replaced um, uh, Mark Sanford. And there was another guy. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember his name. He was on the Agriculture Committee. He was from Oklahoma. And uh, he got primaried for not being Trumpy enough. Um, but that was a very long time ago. For the most part now, uh, the people who hate Trump are, you know, bad people. <laughs> you know, they don't hate Trump for the right reasons. They hate Trump because he's bold and brash. Um, they hate Trump because uh, he's too orange. You know, they hate Trump because he doesn't want to send enough money to Ukraine. Um, and I think behind the scenes, there has to be, the longer this drags on, people in Trump's ears saying, you know what, you are the consensus candidate. <clears throat> You're the only one who can unify the House. You endorsed Jordan. You gave him a shot. And Jordan wasn't able to pull it off. Now Jordan steps aside. It's your time, Mr. President, to step up um, and claim your position as third in line to the presidency. And then you can run for president as the speaker, sitting Speaker of the House. You can have um, – you can control legislation. You can play a role in the political process even if you're not uh, at the top of a ladder. You can climb your way back up from there. I mean it makes perfect sense. Now, the reasons why Trump wouldn't do this would be, one, perhaps it would give him less time to campaign, he would feel. Two, he's already got all these friggin' legal battles to worry about. Um, three, uh, I think that Trump is not necessarily interested in the minutia of Congress. He would rather delegate that to trusted people. And there was a fourth one, but I forgot it. Forgive me. <laughs> so all in all, I'm happy to see Donald's running. I'm glad that there is someone from, like, the somewhat good side. You know, do I think Donald's is perfect? No, but he's better than most of them. Do I think that Donald's is very ambitious and um, uh, a little bit um, suspect because of that? Yes. Do I believe everything he says? No. I don't necessarily know what he believes deep down, but for now at least he's trying to play um, – He's trying to play to our interests. You know, he's at least trying to, you know, that's kind of the standard you have to go with in Congress. You have McCarthy who overtly hates you and would like to see harm be, come to you because he doesn't like you. He does not like the voters at all. He doesn't even like the voters in his own district. Donald's, at least, I don't, I don't think that he hates his voters. I don't know that he necessarily cares about them as much as you know, he would like us to think, you know, you, there's always that question with politicians. Um, I, I do think that he's a self-interested individual. But <clears throat> if he thinks that his path to attaining his goals in life of ascending politically is by doing the right thing, well, then I'm perfectly fine with that. If he has selfish motivations, but the, the, the actions that he takes are positive, that's perfectly fine. You know, it's the same way with Trump. 
you know, do I think that Trump is some great altruist? No. I think Trump is in it for his ego. But if Trump's ego um, motivates him to do the right thing, then I'm going to support him for it, of course. And when his ego motivates him to do the wrong thing, as longtime listeners of this channel know, I'm perfectly happy to call him out for it and to curse him. When he actually was president, I, of course, am going to focus on the negatives um, because I think that that's what's most important is that people hear feedback on what they're doing wrong. Um, <clears throat> and so more often than not, if Trump was mentioned on this channel, which wasn't every day uh, when he was president, I tried to focus on other things because the, everyone was talking about Trump. Did not really have um, that much to add. So unless I had something to add that I did not hear articulated particularly well elsewhere, I would chime in on it. Other than that, I'd let other people talk about old Ronald Blump. Um, and that's why, usually, if I were going to talk about it, it would be critical. Because plenty of people were talking about the positives. And the people who were criticizing Trump were criticizing him for the wrong reasons, as always. They were criticizing him most often for being orange, also for being um, rude. <laughs> you know, like, these are not Trump's big flaws. They criticized him for being Putin's puppet. You know, and I criticized him for being a war criminal. We are not the same. So, uh, with that said, I wish Mr. Donald's luck. Uh, I hope he does have a fruitful political future if he continues in this direction. Um, I think definitely, you know, he wants to be positioned as a potential candidate for governor. DeSantis has, uh, what now, uh, three more years on his term. You know, he's got two years after the 2024 election, so... What, like 2026 20, will be when uh, there is an election for a new governor? That's a long way away. So who knows? Maybe no one will even remember who Byron Donalds is by then. Um, you know, but maybe he would have been a Speaker of the House by then, or at least a prominent member of Congress for a long time, um, as will have Matt Gates. Between those two at this point, I would say I would trust Gates more if they both ran for governor, although I doubt that they would because they'd kind of be running in the same lane. But hey, you know what? If the only candidates that we had in the Republican primary for Florida governor were good for good candidates, I'd be happy with that. And at this point, not getting this is getting kind of off topic, based on what I've seen of those two so far, at this point I trust Gates more. Uh, but not too long ago, you know, a couple of years, I would have thought that uh, Gates was a snake in the grass. Uh, and Gates has grown in my eyes, um, and I trust him now, uh, more so than I used to. Uh, I used to think he was a total fraud and a charlatan. Um, Donalds, uh, who I think more highly of than I used to think of Gates, uh, very easily um, could gain my, or I shouldn't say easily, but within those, four, within those next three years, he has plenty of time um, to gain my trust and, uh, you know, be um, more trustworthy in my eyes than Gates is now. He also has the ability to flame out and be forgotten and become, uh, you know, an obscure backbencher. Three years is an eternity in politics. So with that said, I keep trying to sign off and say, you know, I'm happy with his candidacy. I support it. Uh, and let's see where it goes. So with that said, I will see you folks back here tomorrow, hopefully.